And from the second I found out that Philomena had a mass on her brain, before I knew how bad it was, the first thing I did was pray and pick up my phone and ask the world to help me pray for my daughter. From there, it went wild. He said, Phil is great, she's, in, she's big. He said, but this is bigger than her. This is bigger than her. It's given me, it's humbled me as, as a human being and going forward, like when her miracle does happen. It started already being. I'm Mark Stendardo, I'm Philomena's father. And um, from the moment I found out about the mass that Philomena had, I knew from the woman that I spoke to how terrible it was. And I leaned on my wife. I do have faith. My wife's faith is much stronger than mine, as i grown to know over the years. And uh, between my daughter, how strong she has been through this whole process, not complaining, smiling and uh, then seeing my wife how strong she is there's been times where we were at a very low with Philomena and how she was doing back in an oncology room where she collapsed I come out of a bathroom and 50 people working on my daughter and my wife's dropped to her knees praying and I remember that day and between my daughter and my wife their strength I would never give up and all I do is pray and the support that we get is amazing, and it makes me stronger. And I and I believe I see her every day getting better. And, and I, it's it's truly amazing the, the strides that she makes, not on a weekly basis, but I mean on an hourly basis. I see how much better she's getting, and how and the things that she says to me are amazing. And uh, like I said, between those two people and everybody else around me, I'm I'm, I'm stronger now than I've ever will be. Hi, I'm Mina. I'm Philomena Stendardo's mother. And this experience that we are going through right now has brought to fruition everything that I ever knew about God. That he is good. And he wants to help us more than we could imagine, but we just don't ask. And from the second I found out that Philomena had a mass on her brain, before I knew how bad it was, the first thing I did was pray and pick up my phone and ask the world to help me pray for my daughter. The effect that it's had on our family is that we're most definitely closer than ever. Um, we see each other more than we have in a really long time. And on the community, the community, uh, you know, the world we live in today where there's so much hate and, you know, every time you, look at Facebook or the news, there's a hate crime or there's somebody insulting somebody for things that aren't even important. And now um, even the air seems kinder. The aura, everywhere, everyone, it's just kinder. And it's, it's amazing to see. My name is Danny Markowski. I'm the principal here at St. George School. Phil is in her second year of school here at St. George. She started last year in first grade and then began second grade before you know, the diagnosis came to be. <laughs> Phil is an amazing student in school. Uh, she kind of hits the ground running with every person that she meets. As far as academics are concerned, she excels at, with everything that she does, whether that's in school, whether that's out of school. As far as socially, she's the friend that you want to have in school. She's extremely outgoing, excellent personality. She's sassy. She's tough. Uh, she's just a great person to be around. The major thing that we've done was to do exactly what the family had asked us to do, which was to pray. Um, the very first event that we had here was a community prayer service um, where we had close to 700 people that filled our church to come and pray for Phil. Um, it's been amazing to me that this one little girl has made such an impact and has caused people to not be embarrassed to pray or to use God's name or it, it's really inspiring is what it is. 
As far as school is concerned, one of our major things that we've been trying to do is to keep things as normal as possible because of Phil's brother being in our fourth grade class. Um, so the parents I know wanted to keep things as normal as, as could be for him. So that's kind of what we've been doing here. That's the approach we've been taking. Behind the scenes though, of course, there are people throughout the entire Archdiocese of Philadelphia who are praying daily. I get three to five phone calls a week from other principals and pastors saying that they're praying for Phil. These are people that have never even met this girl before, but feel such a connection to her and, and want to do something. Everybody, I feel, really wants to do something. And the one thing that everybody can do without much effort at all is to pray. That's what the parents have asked for. The main message I think that's really important is, as the parents have asked for too, is prayer. A lot of times when we get into situations that are either difficult for younger children to understand or even difficult for adults to understand, sometimes you have to put your faith into a higher power. For us, that's God, as the same thing for the family as well. Um, it helps to kind of explain maybe, or to understand why these things are happening. Um, we don't have the answers as to why this is happening to Phil. We don't have the answers as to why it happens to anybody. But at this particular point, I like to believe, and I like to have other people believe, and I know the family does as well, that God's got a purpose for her. Whether it be to bring a community together, whether it be to uh, just maybe bring more awareness to what it is that she's battling, or more importantly, just to let people know that it's okay to pray. It's okay to be open about your faith and to put that faith into something higher, and for us, that's God. Hi, my name is John McIntyre. Yeah, I, I went to high school at North, North Catholic High School. Then after that, I uh, went and played for St. Joseph's University, played, at, played there, and after I uh, was there, I went out to uh, Milwaukee, played a year out in Milwaukee, then went back home and played for the Philadelphia Kicks for five years. Well, I grew up with her father, her father and her mother, and I met Phil when she was born. She used to come to her, I coach, I coach her uh, brother, Marky, so Phil would always be around the field wanting to get on the field when she was a kid. So I do some private training, and when Phil was about four years old, you know, I start training there at Samuels once a week, and then I would, we, have, we would have some practice uh, two nights a week with uh, my uh, Fishtown boys and her brother, and I would let Phil practice with us. Yeah, she was four and the, girl, the boys were seven, but she could, she could hold her own. She uh, was a tough kid, just kept fighting through practices, a couple times I would tell her she can't do something. She would tell me she could do it. Next thing you know, she's doing the drills better than some of my kids. The thing I saw in Phil is she just had just the love for the game. You know, it's hard as a kid. She had the aggressiveness. She had the knack to go to goal. You know, some kids, that's all they want to do, but she was smart. She was a smart player. She still is. Uh, she never says no. She always wants to go. Phil, sometimes, what's the word I'm looking for? She's a, she's a, a true fighter. Yeah. Phil, it's Coach Mac. You're gonna, you're gonna win this. I love you. Keep fighting. I'm Kate Sipes, and I'm a first grade teacher at St. George. And Philomena was in my first grade class last year. Uh, my experience with Phil was an awesome experience. Her first day of first grade was my first day of first grade. She, it was her first year at St. George, and she did amazing. She was always trying to do better, and she wanted the best, and that's what she achieved. The part of Phil's personality that stands out the most would have to be her dedication and determination to school. She was always trying to get O's on all her tests and make sure everything was done perfectly. Some of the information that I have on Phil is um, her journal from last year. Uh, this is the journal from September until January. So the first journal we did as a class was, how did you feel on the first day of school? And on the first day of school, Phil felt happy. She was excited to start her first day of St. George. Um, and then all the other journals went into anything that their favorite thing about summer, what they did over the weekend. Um, most of Philomena's journals had to do with soccer. Nice. She, over the weekend, I went to my brother's soccer game and my cousin's birthday. He turned six. Most of the journals are soccer, soccer, soccer. 
with Marky and her team, every person on her team, she would always include everyone. I want to be a chicken nugget. <laughs> I remember when we did this one, um, we were talking all about the word want. And I always uh, encourage the children to be silly, be creative. And I remember when she brought this up to me, it made me laugh and it captured Phil's true personality. She was funny. I want the world to keep praying for Phil. Storm the heavens. She needs her miracle and she'll get it. I'm Tina Blyhead, I'm Phil and Nina Dan. And I'm Uncle Jim. She was training for soccer with her trainer and um, the trainer brought something to her father's attention that I guess her dexterity wasn't what it was yes. before and so that prompted um, a visit to the pediatrician which then led to an emergency room visit and MRI which is where the um, tumor was first revealed. The diagnosis uh, was that the, the tumor was found to be cancerous. Um, I believe it's referred to as a geoblastoma. It's a, it's a glial. Glial, I'm it's sorry. A glio, it's a glioblastoma. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, it's in, a, it's in a location that is very difficult to access, and therefore it's not operable. So as soon as they received the um, biopsy results, that day or the next day, she began her chemotherapy. Their, their alternative, well, actually, their real healing power is with God, and so that's what they're focused on. I mean, we're so fortunate to be at TOP, to be in Philadelphia, yes. world-recognized institution, and those people are wonderful at what they do, but for our family and, and for Phil's parents, it's God who heals, and that's who we're turning to. And I, I, did, um, I did reach out to some spiritual healers yes. that I was aware of, uh, and it was, it was really an intense experience to interact with them because um, the feedback that I got from these, these people who are deeply spiritual people um, was that, I guess in their own terms, they, they, they visit her, her being, right? her, yes. her larger presence yes. uh, in, in an alternate realm, if you will, type of thing. And they all had the same thing to say about her. She was just, they used to always use the word huge. Her, her being, her presence in a spiritual sense is enormous uh, and powerful and beautiful and um, that's just some really encouraging, uplifting feedback from these people who, who reached, who I had reached out to personally because the, in the power of prayer and the, and the, you know, the unconventional side of things, uh, I yes. think there's people maybe overlook that a bit and I think it's equally important. There aren't really words to describe the the, the size of it and particularly the impact that it's had on our on the family and I think everybody around I mean I know that my sister feels it I know that Mark Phil's father feels it like we feel it it I can tell you that it happened it seemed to be overnight the neighborhood came together to have um, a black party slash prayer visual for Philomena and um, we as a family were together as a family, so we didn't come here. Um, but it was several blocks, and you just saw a lot of purple and pink. To, where people were wearing their shirts. People. There were thousands of people, and the people who were there that we spoke to said, you know, they couldn't help but pray while they were here, and so, that they. It's a beautiful, it was a beautiful energy. experience. And so um, I have a friend from where I live in New Jersey who came here with her family, and she said that it has changed her, it has made them better. It was powerful. And, and, and we're moved. We're like, it brings us to tears. I mean, it's tears of gratitude and just so thankful because I know particularly her parents have found so much strength. And It makes a difference. I think that would be the thing. It makes a difference. It's not some cliche thing to say, pray. No, it really makes a difference in, in, in a larger sense, but really just to the family, to know how much attention people are giving this. I'm telling you, God's hands are all over this. And yes. We feel it. And it's because of everybody's prayer, the power. I feel like we keep like a broken record saying the same thing over and over again, but it really is. It is the power of prayer. They, they feel it. They see it. It's, it, it it's incredible. Difference. Just don't stop. There is power in prayer. We feel it. We're seeing it. I'm Phil's uh, pop. My name's Pat Stendardo. She's probably just one of the greatest kids in the world. You know, she's a fighter. She loves her soccer. She loves basketball. She loves baseball. And, you know, there's nobody like her. And she's going to fight through this with all the prayers, you know, that we have to help her out. And it's just going to be, you know, come next year this time, she's going to be the one here on the camera. Hey, Phil, the mug. 
Hi, my name is Joan Standardo. I'm Phil's mom. Um, she's like one of the strongest little people I've ever encountered. My little firecracker. I've called her that since she was little. And she's going to beat this. God is good. She's prayers are amazing. The community is amazing. And it brought more people together who stopped praying. They're now praying. And I love you, Phil. You are my firecracker. Hey, Phil, you know you're Port Richmond tough, you're Philly tough. You have the whole community, the city, the world with you right now. Keep the, we're going to keep the prayers coming. Positive energy, positive energy. We're going to keep fighting for you. You're going to keep fighting. God bless you, Phil. Hey, Phil, how are you? How are you? You're my inspiration. You led me back to God. Keep fighting. Phil's life has been a symbol of uh, peace and unity and bringing a community back to God, uh, reaching from coast to coast. And that's a... Uh, that's extremely encouraging, and it's a miracle in itself. Hey, Phil, uh, don't get too big for us. Uh, save me an autograph. Thanks, kid. I love you, Phil. I look forward to seeing you in a couple, few days. Everybody at St. George is praying for you, wishing well for you. We love you, and we'll see you soon. You're a fighter. Great job. My name is Larry Ambers here. Phil, you know, we love you. Praying for you every day. Can't we take you back on these sidelines with us in the games? Especially in basketball practice. I can tell you, get low, Phil, get low. We really miss you and we love you. All right, Phil? Can't we take you back? Uh, my name's Bethany. She will be on the soccer field with the boys, yelling at the coach if he's trying to take her out of a drill. I'm Brienne. Um, I know, I've known Phil for about four years. She's one of the guys. She's just great. She's the best. When I think about Phil, I think about big, how big she is. As small as she is, she's humongous. I'm Mark. When I think about Beans, I think about the warrior that she is. She don't back down from nothing. She's the only girl out there with the guys, and you could tell that she don't care. She will battle. Even Nick, and Nick is the biggest. He's like the, the goalie, and Beans will go right through him with no problem. That's how she is even at basketball practice. She's a warrior. I'm Megan, and I've known Phil what seems like forever, and she's the best. If Phil could tell the world anything, she would say, be ready for me, because she is a leader. She has everything in her to become somebody so strong and somebody who's going to lead the world in something big. Yeah, that, that's definitely Phil, because and if anybody can beat this, Phil's going to beat this because she is a fighter to the very end. Nothing's going to hold Phil back. Trust me. Phil, we miss you. We love you. Can't wait to see you back. Bean, we need you here so bad. You make us laugh. You make us smile. You give us all a lot of strength and hope. And um, we cannot wait to see you running up and down that field, scoring goals, teasing the boys, <laughs> getting in fights with them, arguing with them, and then coming back on, out of the field with a big smile. So get back here. Beans, this is Mark B. I miss you. I love you. I can't wait till you get back because I know you're going to be back out there giving them hell like always. I miss you. Deuces. Hi, Phil. I miss you. We need you. We need you back, and I need my girl on the sidelines so we could tease the boys and do our jams and our down, down, baby, down by the roller coaster, sweet, sweet baby. I'll never let you go. Beans and Mego. I love you, Phil. My name is Marky St. George. Um, like Venango, around like Alman Street. I, yes, I play soccer. Well, we have won lots of championships. We have 11 kids on our team, and I play for Fish Town, up top. Yes. He in FC, like, I'd say Barcelona. Messi. I like that he has a lot of skill, and that he takes his time, and that he's a leader. She is happy. Sometimes when she's joking around, she gives this weird voice. <laughs> no, she did play for Fishtown younger, but now she plays for Philly soccer. She likes playing the soccer game where she's in net, 
and we have two pillows on the side and I have to like shoot and she has to clear it out to the side. And her favorite player is Carly Lloyd. Carly Lloyd, we would love if you would say a, sis a prayer for my sister, Phil. Jelly. Because I used to play with her when I was a little kid. Tag. And soccer. Please pray for my friend, Phil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. What do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. Hi, my name is Mark. Hi, my name is Joey. And follow us on Facebook on, at Storm the Heavens. Thank you all for all the prayers and support. Um, you know, time is our most valuable and most limited resource. And I am eternally grateful and forever in your debt. We all are for every single prayer that you lift up for Philomena. And we will find a way somehow to pay every single one of you back and to play it forward. God is great. Keep praying because it's working. I just want everybody to know that it's hard to thank everybody. So we, I want everybody to know that there's been so many people that helped us. Um, thank you so much. And when I do see you, I will thank you. I will never forget. I've told many people that we believe. We believe in the power of prayer. We will never forget. And when our child is healthy, we're going to pay it forward over and over again. Thank you so much. Don't stop praying. Don't. Um, I just like like my brother was playing, and then I played with his team for a couple years, and then I got on the team, left that team, went to another team, went to another team, and I I'm staying on this team now. PSA. Um, yeah, Dennis. He he does good drills. Sometimes you do one-on-ones at the end. Yeah. Um, one -on -one. Um, sometimes I play wing, sometimes I play up top. What? Mm, no. <laughs> no, I don't. Well, sometimes I, I, sometimes I do that to my dad. I have an older brother, Marky. He's funny. He shares a lot. He... He does a lot of things with me, and, well, plays on his iPad with me, and made me feel good. They prayed for me. Um, my mom, mom came to visit me, and she brought, she brought the me and my, like, Una. Um, you guys took a career, which is a job. And I'll say like two, three, two, three, and I'm gonna go to the three. And if it has one on it, you only get, you start with one dollar. If it has three on it, 
seven three dollars. If you land on a banana, you get some bananas. <laughs> Thank you guys, and don't stop praying, because it's working. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy, I really want to thank you for being awesome. <laughs> 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 Settle down, settle down, settle down. Now who wants some rice and peas? But first, you've got to give me Garvey. Just a flipping coat No thank you, I don't want it, I don't want no goat No boxes of chicken, no bars of pork I'd rather swing and join the party from the flipping boat I know you, I know you Slip not tax rope, that the wheel with them picture If you run your choke, I know you Slip not tax rope, that the wheel with them picture If you run your choke, I know you Slip not tax rope, that the wheel with them picture If you run your choke, come on You're flipping right to foot Not I words, just a flipping coat No, thank you, I don't want it, I don't want no coat No boxes of chicken, no bars of pork I'd rather swim than join the party from the flipping boat I know joke Slip not tax rope That the way when them picture if you run your choke I know joke Slip not tax rope That the way when them picture if you run your choke I know joke Slip not tax rope That the way when them picture if you run your choke Come on Electric, 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 electric,